This is uh, Brett with the Electric Bike Report, and I'm here with Rob Kaplan, the uh, sales manager at uh, at Curry. Close enough. And uh, and I just I'm going to ask him a couple questions about how the event's going and and what the response has been so far. So. Um, <laughs> so so far, what what's your impressions of the event? We're, we're real excited about this. We think it's a fantastic venue, and it gets a lot of different electric bikes out in an environment for people to test and ride in sort of a non-threatening, non-partisan way. So we're very excited. It's a beautiful venue, as you can see, and uh, so far the response has been fantastic. This category is all about getting people on the product, so really having them available to ride in this type of a, an environment is, is really beneficial. Who have you, um, who have you talked to so far? Um, uh, members of the media, newspapers? Yeah, we, we've talked to a few members of the media, uh, primarily Southern California-based magazines, um, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I think, again, once we get people on the product, everyone says, wow, I didn't even know that it existed and, and what a fun way to get around. And uh, hopefully we'll get some, some great uh, pr and press and, and uh, awareness out of it. What bike have you noticed has had the best response from, from people who have test ridden so far? Oh, clearly for us, that's eFlow. It's our, our new bike that we just started shipping this week. We, we introduced it at Interbike last year. It's a very exciting product for us. It represents tip of the pyramid, latest technology. Uh, the, the way the battery is situated in the seat tube, it really turns the bike from a handling perspective into a normal bike. It's got intuitive electronics, uh, lots of power. It, it's really quite a special bike. So the response on that bike has been overwhelmingly wow. Is that, is that on the market now? It is. We just started shipping it this week. And uh, so far, there have been probably a half a dozen bikes sold at retail, and, and we're pretty excited about it. It's a, it's a bike that, uh, again, it's a, it's a wow bike. It's the bike that gets the enthusiast market excited because they get on the bike, and, and it performs uh, really fantastic. And uh, we think it's going to open up a whole new level of awareness uh, in bike shops and with enthusiasts. Can you show me uh, which bike we're talking about here? Absolutely. So it's, it's this bike over here. Um, it's called the eFlow Nitro, and uh, it's, it's pretty unique. It, because the battery is situated in the seat tube, uh, it really changes the handling characteristics of the bike uh, from what is normally a little bit off-center with most e-bikes to a bike that handles just like a normal bike. Uh, because the battery, the extra weight of the battery is in line with the rider's core body weight, it really makes the bike feel like a normal bike. In addition, it has top-of-the-line componentry, so we use a SRAM 2x10 drive system. We use hydraulic brakes with regenerative braking, a unishock. It has intelligent electronics. The, uh, the head unit actually acts as the key, so by taking the head unit off the bike, it disables the electronics uh, to uh, render them useless when the bike is parked. Uh, and it's just a very, very unique ride, lots of power, and uh, a great handling bike. Okay, sounds good. That was Rob with Curry Technologies and with the eFlow. Okay, I am in with uh, Rob Kaplan again, and we're going to talk about the Bosch-powered high bike. It's, um, Bosch is using a middle motor design, and this bike is slated to come to market when? Uh, it's going to be shipping for model year 2014. Uh, we may be able to ship it late in 2013 or early 2014, and we will be one of the launch partners with Bosch in North America. And what's, in your mind, is unique about Bosch's mid-drive motor versus other hub motors that are on the market? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's several things. Uh, first of all, they're going to optimize the drive system for the North American market. And that's one of the reasons that you won't find Bosch in the North American market right now, because they realize that it needs to be tuned for North American desire, which is a little bit more power, a little bit more torque. Uh, obviously, don't have the EU regulations to worry about. The other thing that's unique about the high bike is they've mounted the motor topside. So most middle drives are mounted underneath the bottom bracket, which works just fine on a commuter bike or a road bike, but obviously for a mountain bike, clearance is a, is a pretty big issue. So what, what High Bike has done is they actually patented this method of mounting the motor above the bottom bracket and therefore creating a bike that gives you all the clearance of a regular normal mountain bike with the middle, middle drive power system 
uh, to create a bike that for a cross-country rider really is a very unique ride. This is the kind of bike that would enable uh, an older person like myself to keep up with the young shop guys on a cross-country ride. And that's really what the bike has become in Europe. It, it's really, uh, the sales have exploded and it's really brought a lot of uh, baby boomers back into cross-country mountain biking, which is kind of special for those of us that grew up riding cross-country mountain bikes. Is Are there any... Um full suspension models in the pipeline? There, there are, and in Europe, Bosch sell, uh, High Bike sells, I think they have 14 different models with this drive system on them, and we're still trying to figure out exactly which of those models we'll bring to North America, but we anticipate that there will be at least one full suspension version as well. Does High Bike uh, do city bikes as well? Small wheeled bikes, I know those have been pretty popular in, in Europe, 20 inch wheels, more compact for urban dwellers. Yeah, High Bike has a full range of products for the European market. They're, they're really a premier brand in Germany. Uh, it's a family started company that's now owned by our parent group, Excel Group. And they're really seen as sort of a full range, but a absolutely geared towards the enthusiast market uh, in, in Europe right now. The, the 2012 Olympic silver medalist, I believe, uh, in the women's cross country was riding a high bike. So it is sort of that premier brand. Uh, I don't know what their range of 20 inch urban bikes are specifically, but I know they have city bikes in their range in Europe. So um, can you speak at all about service through Bosch? And I, that, that's some of the rumors that I've heard is that they're going to be handling a lot of the service yeah. aspects of their bikes. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great point, Brett. So one of the reasons that we're not selling this product here today is that Bosch is setting up a, a North American service center. And just like in Europe, they'll be handling the service aspects of the electric drive system. Uh, because we really pride ourselves on interfacing with our dealers directly, we will be involved in that process. But that's one of the reasons that they're not selling here today is because they, they want to set up the infrastructure in North America specifically. Okay, well, great. So I, again, talking with Rob, or Rob, <laughs> about the high bike and uh, the bike they have here. Is this a 29er? This is a 29er, yeah. 29er, um, hardtail with a flipped uh, Bosch motor for better clearance. And I'm about to go on a test ride, check it out for the first time. Pretty excited.